a Japanese shopping street lined with all kinds of stores. It's a key part of everyday life in Japan. Shopping streets are more than just places to buy things. They have always been important social spaces. But in recent years, shopping streets have suffered from decline. Efforts to revitalize them have given birth to new initiatives. This time on Japanology Plus, we'll explore the charms and challenges of Japan's shopping streets. Hello, welcome to Japanology Plus. I'm Peter Barakan. I'm in a neighborhood called Sunamachi, which is on the eastern end of the old part of Tokyo. And this street, where about 180 local merchants ply their trade, is altogether 670 meters long, making it one of the longer shopping streets in Tokyo. The word shopping street is always used to translate the Japanese term shotengai, which applies to these kinds of streets. I don't remember hearing the word shopping street used like that in English, but to me it implies a mixture of what we might call a high street with a street market. These kind of streets were an essential part of daily life in just about every local community in Japan until the advent of supermarkets and malls. I'm sure you can tell which direction this is going, but let's start off today with a look at a few typical shopping streets. A trip to a shopping street leads to all kinds of conversations. Along a shopping street, you'll find merchants with all kinds of practical knowledge. You can seek their advice about the items they are selling and have a good chat at the same time. Our guest this time is Lady Yamanaka, a management consultant. He knows a great deal about what's involved in operating a business in a shopping street. I'm actually quite surprised that there's so many people around considering it's a weekday in the middle of the day. Yeah. This shopping street is among the busiest in Japan. There used to be a lot of small workshops in this part of the city. The people they employed and residents of nearby public housing relied on this shopping street. They would get all their supplies here. That place sells great stuff. They make the meals that they sell here. Hello. Whoa, these all look good. What do you recommend then? Oh, yeah, that looks good, doesn't it? Mm. Okay. Oh, okay, I'm going to pig out. I'm going to have a shrimp cutlet and a couple of shumai, maybe. That's lovely. Thank you very much. And what's the damage on that? Okay, thank you. They taste great. Mm, that's good. In this part of town, the, the old part of Tokyo, the people just seem to be always so friendly. I mean, I'm here for the first time and you know, they treat you like you're a regular customer almost. Yes, that's true. That's the appeal of a shopping street. Elderly customers especially will ask the shopkeeper to recommend what's good. They enjoy having a chat about things like that. And there are a lot of takeout places where they make their food from scratch. They're real pros at making some special item. Gyoza, or shumai, or cutlets, or whatever. Customers feel more at ease when they know exactly who's making their food. That's another point. And for a regular customer, 
the shop may offer something on the house from time to time. That's all part of the charm. Here's a shop along the Sunamachi shopping street that sells Oden. With Oden, you choose from a variety of ready-to-eat foods stewed in a soy-based broth. Daikon, kombu kelp, tofu, egg, and various kinds of fish paste patties. This place is very popular. There's always a crowd of customers. What draws them here is the chance to choose from 30 different items, all made in-house. A family of five runs this shop. It's common for families to operate these shopping street businesses. Let's follow this one through a typical workday. Things get going early in the morning at 6 a.m. The shop owner is Yukitoshi Nakajima. His first task each day is to prepare the stewing broth. Boiling seaweed and skipjack tuna shavings, he makes five large stock pots of broth. The broth determines the taste of the oden, so Nakajima takes great care with its preparation. Meanwhile, another daily routine takes place at Tsukiji, one of the world's largest seafood wholesale markets. The fish here are from all over Japan. Daughter Saki comes to Tsukiji to buy ingredients for the day's oden. My, my Five years ago, Saki's father entrusted her with purchasing supplies. Today, she buys two kinds of shark. At 7 a.m., Yukitoshi Nakajima begins making the fish paste patties. The main ingredient is the shark Saki bought earlier that morning in Skiji. One type has soft flesh, the other is firm. Mincing and mixing them yields a fish paste with just the right texture. But the shark flesh varies from day to day. To keep a consistent texture, he has to adjust the ratio each time, a skill that takes 10 years to master. The shark flesh turns white with kneading. Then it's placed in a machine that shapes it into square patties. Yukitoshi's wife, Keiko, boils the patties, closely monitoring the heat. The shop makes only 100 patties every day. They charge 40 yen a piece for them. That's an extremely low price, even by the standards of Japan's traditional shopping streets. As soon as she gets back from the market, Saki starts making fish balls. She uses her thumb and forefinger to shape the fish paste. She says it took her five years to make them quickly and evenly. She makes 1,000 every day. <laughs> the fish balls are fried and sold for 10 yen each. Can the shop really make a sufficient profit at that price? For now, we are getting by. We're doing okay. We try not to raise prices unless absolutely necessary. We want anyone to be able to afford our food. The family divides up the labor to make sure the shop is ready to open each day with all the varieties of Orden ready to serve. The moment they open at 10.30, there's a rush of customers. The way they make all the food items is not the only amazing skill. The owner's mother is a wizard at totaling the price in her head. She knows the price of all 30 items and can work out the cost of an order while carrying on a conversation. <laughs> Uh, 
Calculated exactly. On a Japanese shopping street, family businesses show off professional skills that may take years to perfect. Yoshihiro Somiya runs a prepared foods takeout shop. His side dishes and pickled foods are very popular. His family has been running the shop for 50 years. The family home and the shop are a single building, a typical shopping street setup. How many generations has the, the shop been going? Two Nine. generations. Oh. And do you live on the premises, either upstairs or in the back or something? We live upstairs. The shop's at street level. Oh. If it's not an imposition, could we have a little peek? It's cramped and cluttered. <laughs> you don't mind? I, I don't mind if you don't mind. <laughs> Come right in then. Thank you. <laughs> this is our workspace and pickling room. Hello. This is where we make the pickled foods. Over here, the cooked foods. Oh, okay, you've got a whole kitchen thing going on here, yeah. It's a mess, I'm afraid. It, it actually looks very clean. Remarkably clean. Very nice. The kitchen in one of these shops may be old and cramped, but it will nearly always be sparkling clean. Upstairs is the family home. Somia lives here with his wife and his father. What are the advantages and disadvantages of living so close to your workplace? An office worker would spend time commuting. That's one of the good things for me. I don't have to worry about commuting. Work is just steps away. But there is a downside. Sometimes I don't feel like working, but work is still right there. I can't avoid it. What are your opening hours? We're open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So if somebody from the neighborhood comes by at half past eight and said, I've run out of something or I just need something for dinner, what do you do? We close at 7 p.m., but we'll still be downstairs tidying up. Customers will often poke their heads in around then, and we might still have something to sell them. If we do have something they want, we'll sell it. Things like that can be a plus or a minus. <laughs> Here's a tea merchant. Would you like a cup? Yes, please. Coming right up. Why do you alternate the pouring? To keep the strength of the tea equal, so both cups will taste just the same. Mm. This is a tea with a mild sweetness to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Which part of Japan does this come from? This is a blend of three teas. It's the work of Japan's best tea blender. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> Very aromatic. The best oh. of Japanese tea. Oh. oh, that's good. If people sample the tea, they'll know how good it is. Oh. Then they'll buy it. This is a great thing about a shopping street. Shopkeepers give you samples and offer explanations. Right, I mean, there are specialty shops where if you go halfway across town, of course, you can get the same sort of advice, I'm sure, but to be able to get it here in your local street is, yeah, it's excellent. Yes. It's kind of a sense of local community, which I suppose in 
earlier days, people would have just taken for granted. But I suppose that sense of community is broken down so much now um, that it's something that needs to be nurtured. If you spend your whole life there, it's like all the shopkeepers are your friends. It's your own neighborhood, your own community. A shopping street is a workplace and a living space. It offers so many of the pleasures of everyday life. Hi, I'm Matt Alt, and this is Plus One. Now, today's episode is all about traditional Japanese shopping streets. But I'm not going to focus on the average everyday sorts of shopping streets. I'm going to go to several in the city that focus on specific niches and target specific types of customers. Right now I'm in Akihabara, and if you're of a certain age, you'll associate this place with otaku and subculture. But traditionally, it's been all about electronic stores and electronic boutiques, and that's what we're going to check out right now. Akihabara is one of Tokyo's world-famous districts. It boasts 500 electronic shops of all sizes within an area roughly one kilometer by one kilometer. Now, broadly speaking, there are four types of electronic shops here in Akihabara. The first are consumer electronic shops, where you might get appliances or other types of electronics for your home. The second are pro shops, where professionals and hobbyists look for specialty gear. The third are component shops that sell the little bits and pieces you might need to repair a broken down piece of electronic equipment. And the fourth are junk shops that sell completely broken down gear that you can break down and use for parts yourself. Matt visits a shop that is currently very popular. Oh, look at this. A robot store. I always love a good robot store. This is great. Ah, hello there. Welcome. Nice to meet you. So, can you tell me what, what sorts of robots are popular with your customers? Voice recognition robots are big these days. Here's one example. How cute. Very cute. He's in a good mood today. <laughs> now let's go to the next location. The Katsabashi shopping street, which is close to the old heart of Tokyo. The theme here is cooking, but many people come for a particular type of product. Ah, ah, I could use one of these right about now. Just kidding. You know what this is? This is a food sample, the kind you see on display in restaurants all over Japan. That's what this place specializes in. All sorts of what you might call fake foods. These food samples are handcrafted from plastic to look just as delicious as the real thing. You can see at a glance what's on the menu. But restaurant owners aren't the only buyers. May I ask, why did you come here to buy sample foods? These are for an offering to Ganesh, an Indian deity whose image we happen to have at our Buddhist temple. So you're a monk? Yes. When we put out an offering of real food, it draws flocks of birds to peck at it. And to avoid that, we've decided to try this plastic food instead. Fascinating. This is something I never even imagined. It lasts forever. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. <laughs> they definitely won't go bad. Matt's next stop is the Sugamo Jizodori shopping street. Now, this is a unique shopping arcade. It's optimized for elderly residents. In fact, some people even call it the Granny Ginza. Check it out. 
The shops on this particular arcade appeal to local elderly people by selling things like canes or baskets or other things you might need to get by. We'll take a look inside this nail salon. Hello there, Konnichiwa. So what kind of uh, establishment is this? Our nail salon caters to the senior market. Many of our customers are in their 50s, 60s and 70s. We do their nails for them. Well, I love the prices. Too bad I'm too young to take advantage of them. We're the only nail place that offers a senior discount. That's our selling point. Next up is a photo studio. So what kind of photography studio is this? We do memorial photographs for the elderly. Funerary photography. Now this is something we don't really have in my country. In Japan, when someone dies, a photo portrait of them in life is displayed at the funeral. This studio targets people aged 60 and over. A customer can have a hair and makeup session before sitting for the photo. They take more than 100 photos per month. Hello there, nice to meet you. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. So, what made you choose this place? Why did you come here for photography? I'm sure it's going to be great. With this service, there's no scramble for a photo when a family has to prepare for a funeral. Japanese shopping arcades are really vibrant examples of traditional Japanese merchant culture. It's kind of like getting to shop in living history. And on that note, see you next time. place was evidently a kimono shop that I got a sign up saying they're closing down after 45 years in business so I mean this street does seem to be fairly busy there's lots of shops still around but evidently not everybody can make a business uh, make a living out of it in some cases it's an issue of the proprietor this kimono shop had no successor to take over shops in business for 45 even 60 years sometimes have to be closed down. In parts of Japan outside the big cities, there's an epidemic of shuttered shopping streets, as we call them. That's a big challenge for shopping streets these days. This is Mienokawa shopping street in Chikibu, a city in Saitama prefecture. The local population is in decline and increasingly elderly. Ten years ago, a new initiative quickly brought customers back. What was the revitalization strategy here? A member of the Shopping Street Association is driving this van to a facility not far from some local mountains. Once inside, he quickly sets up folding tables and lays out a variety of items. This 
is a mobile shopping street initiative run by 20 shopkeepers of Miyanokawa Shopping Street. They take turns having their wares sold by the mobile operation at different locations. Today, the mobile shopping street is visiting a care facility for 50 elderly people. The shop is here twice a month and the residents look forward to it. How did this initiative get started? The elderly people may have things delivered to them purely for convenience, but that's not how they want to shop. So we offered to bring the shopping street to them. We realized that they really enjoy shopping in person, so we're not just selling them stuff, we're bringing them pleasure. The Mobile Shopping Street initiative allows facility residents to actually see and choose products. A welcome difference from just having family or staff buy things for them. The mobile shopping street does about 50,000 yen in sales per event. Positive response has enabled it to expand to 12 events per month at 8 facilities. These days they are also serving communities impacted by population decline. This is just one of the initiatives being tried all over the country to support shopping streets. Those kind of fixes are interesting, but how well are they working? Shopping street initiatives need the support of the authorities and the public. There are streets where they renovate an empty shop and then invite people to use the space as a cake shop or a cafe, for example. That's a great idea. Yeah. Oh. A shop run by young people is a breath of fresh air for a shopping street. This kind of thing is popular all over Japan these days. Mm. Well, that's all very encouraging. You hear so much about these old shops closing down these days that one tends to get a bit pessimistic, but evidently there's still room for a little bit of optimism as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next time, Japanophiles featuring Bjorn Heiberg, a knife shop owner who has devoted his life to introducing Japanese knife culture to the world.